Hi everyone, it's Wayne Wilson from Kelowna, British Columbia, and I'm uh, delighted that you could join us here, uh, join me to uh, do a couple of small uh, sketches and then add some watercolor to them. So um, we're gonna do two landscape scenes today. We're going to do one from the Okanagan Valley here. Those of you who know something about the Okanagan um, uh, economy, uh, agricultural economy, you know that in, uh, Beginning in the 1920s, there was commercial grape growing, and uh, from the early 30s, um, there was uh, commercial wine making, um, and it's still a huge part of the Okanagan landscape. The other little uh, sketch we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna take you down to a place that we've gone on vacation a, a few times down to, Ziwataneo. Uh, those of you who remember um, uh, Shawshank Redemption will know that that's, uh, that's where he absolutely wanted to go, was to Ziwatanejo. So um, we're going to get started here in just a minute. And this is, um, this is uh, another one of the pieces that I uh, have sitting behind me here. This is uh, um, what I've done with, uh, with flowers uh, a couple of weeks ago um, when I did one of these Facebook Live sessions. Uh, I had a larger piece up, but I wanted a, a vertical piece um, with those kind of blown up flowers. So that's what I ended up doing. So um, there we go. So we're going to take about 20 minutes here. Um, these are uh, horizontal pieces that we're going to do. I'm just going to move this camera over here and put it in my um, little uh, gooseneck piece over here. Um, and if it ends up being a bit backwards, I'm sorry about that because when I tried to set this up, for some reason, switching it to the right way around um, ended up with um, um, ended up with me uh, having um, uh, it, the whole screen turned yellow for some reason. So I'm not sure what the scoop was there. But um, anyways, here we go. Uh, we're going to do a, a couple of pieces here. So I'm going to do a, a vineyard one, and I'm going to do uh, these are some ones that I tested out to uh, to do. So we're going to start off. Um, using these um, three inch by nine inch pieces of paper. And um, we'll start off with the, the, the palm trunk that um, uh, you can see in, in pretty much any tropical location. Um, so, and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the way the art police don't like you to start. And I'm gonna put that, that tree trunk, that palm trunk right in the middle. Now palms, I'm gonna start this way. Palms grow like this, and then maybe one side, maybe not quite as, as flared, and bring, see the, the point here is a little bit higher than the one here? Now, if you notice palm trunks, they, they, they get kind of all ratty along the bottom. So just make some squiggly lines across the bottom here, and then you don't have to worry about it too much. Now palms, you notice, have this, this kind of pattern in their trunks where it's the, the sections in them are, go up in kind of pie-shaped pieces, and they're not all even. Some of them are wide, some of them are narrower, but they kind of go up in this crossed fashion up on either side. There we are. Now what we want to do, now this is kind of a hard edge along here. So take your pencil and just move it down and rough up those edges just a little bit so that it, it looks a little more realistic on, and on this, on both sides here, where those sections come, you can make a little notch in it. and and. Palm trunks have got these kind of expansion little pieces that, that grow in to them. So just make a few of those little marks. It's like, um, uh, it's like the, the bark is stretched out and it's pulled apart. So you want to make those all the way up into each piece of those this palm trunk, and it's sitting on a beach, and we haven't drawn the beach yet, so don't worry, the beach is coming. But there's, 
there's that palm trunk right in the middle. And that's what I say, art police hate anything in the middle of a painting. They will always tell you, never paint anything in the middle of a... Well, I don't really care. Um, now, we're going to draw the beach line. And, and remember, horizon lines are always straight. So you could actually even take a, a ruler and do this. But just draw a straight line across this way. And there it's going to come across here. So there's your beach line, right? Now, we want to give it a little bit of variety. So I think on the right here, what we'll do is we'll bring in a little piece of, the sh of a rocky shoreline. It comes in here. Remember, it's, these horizon lines are always flat. And then you've got this rugged, rocky kind of shoreline that's, that's coming up. And so you don't have to... Notice how I'm being so precise about all of this, eh? Right? Um, and we'll... When you add some color to this, it'll, and then you, maybe you've got a little bit of an island that's out this way as well, a jagged island out here. And now, finally, we want to make the horizon line. So we'll take this, this horizon line, and again, it's going to be straight flat across. We'll pick it up on the other side. So there's your, that doesn't quite match up, but hey, what the hell. I mean, what the heck? What can I say? Um, there we go. So there's our basic tropical kind of, of scene. Um, we're going to have the sun coming in from this side. So you're going to have some shade on this side. So just very lightly, you want to just add some weight to that. So we got Carol joining in, and, and I see Brandy is here. She's been here before, my niece from the Arctic joining in. Okay, so we've got a, uh, we're gonna add a little bit of color to this, and we're gonna do these, we're gonna go back and forth from these, uh, between these pieces that we're doing, uh, because I wanna get them to dry a little bit. Um, remember that this is backwards, I'm actually not left-handed, but for some reason that, that trick on Facebook Live wasn't working, so. Um, so we're gonna start with the tree trunk, and the, remember, I think lots of people think of tree trunks as being, um, is being brown, but you know, palm trunks are often kind of a, a grayish color. So I've taken a little bit of brown and I've added some some gr some black in it, tiny little bit of black, and just paint that up. And there's your there's your tree trunk. Okay. Now what you can do is you can take a little bit of 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 black. And just on this on this edge, because this is where the shade is going to be, because remember the sun is coming in from this side, Not too much black there. Just add some add some gray in for that side. There you go. So there's just to give the the give it a bit of dimension. Oh, we got, look at that! Look at that! We've got Maureen joining in as well. Now you, we want to add some uh, beach to this. So take some. This is we're going to say that this is brown sand. Um, for the beach because it's your painting you can decide that so just take this brown and just a real fast wash along the bottom and don't worry about getting it all perfect because sand is never perfect um, but you want to try to get a fairly straight line across this sand horizon and I, I kind of like it actually um, faded out a bit in in here. There you are. So we're going to just let this dry a little bit. Um, actually, you know what the things I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of that the same kind of grayish brown that we did here for the tree trunk. I'm going to add that into this um, this bit of mountain cliff side here on this side. You catching all of this? There we are. And a little bit on the island there as well. There we are. Now we'll add some more dimension to that um, in a little bit when it gets uh, a little drier. So there's the start of our, um, our one landscape scene. Okay, now we're gonna just put that aside a little bit here and we're gonna, we're gonna have a look at, um, at a vineyard scene. And we'll, we'll do this, uh, we'll pay some deference to the, to the uh, 
the art police this time. And, and we'll see, they, they, they always want things off to a side, you know, in thirds, do it a third, feature and a third, or feature and a third, bottom, top and bottom and all of that. So we're gonna do that uh, here. So we're gonna start with a, um, a hillside. It's kind of rolling landscape that's, that's kind of well-drained soils. So we'll just go from this side over here and then maybe we want another hill in here. And then maybe there's a bit of a hill in here. Another one going off this way. And maybe in the background a little bit of that as well. Now, if you think about vineyards, they kind of move off into, um, into the distance. And things in the distance are smaller than things that are close up. So Think about the vineyard, the rows of vineyards, and this is what the vineyard is looks like. Is it it's the rows of vines come down from the horizon, and as they get closer to you, they get wider apart. And don't worry about well so this is all of the foliage that you're seeing on these rows of in the vineyard here okay if you if you next time you're driving you're doing a wine tour or something have a look at the vineyards and how they in the distance they move off into uh, narrower in the distance we're going to do the same with this side here Till you get yourself a set of vineyards here. More definitions. Notice, notice all of that wonderful green foliage here, right? right? This is how you do foliage when you're doing things real quick. So we're just picking up. Remember the one of the first ones that I that I sketch pieces that I did here was the was the uh, was the orchard scene, and again you've got those symmetric rows, um, and the, it's no different than in this uh, in this vineyard piece here. And then finally, a little bit up here. There we go. So there's your kind of. The, your basic setting for those um, for that vineyard scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, a wash of that green that we've been using all the way along. Remember, I wanted to keep this really, really simple for you. So we're going to take that it's a moss green, and we're going to go over everything, right? Just absolutely everything. And and you want to keep it light. Remember, um, watercolor always dries. Um, dries lighter than what you put on. So get it all over here and we're going to add some darker green um, later here to give it some definition. So there's your there, and we'll get us we'll go get a sky going here as well. So there's now you see see how straightforward doing a, a vineyard scene can be. Um, so there's your there's your basic outline for a vineyard. Um, we're just I say not building the piano here. I wanted to try to make this as simple and straightforward as you, as we can, and we're going to add more dimension to this in a little bit. We're just going to um, let this sit for uh, a couple of minutes. We're going to bring back the um, the palm trunk, and we're going to put in a um, we're going to put in the ocean here now. And what I want to do is I want to take a wet brush with just clear water, and I want to fill in this whole space here with just clear water, right up to the horizon line. Okay, and this is going to be a, a kind of wet in wet kind of thing that we're doing. I'm sure there's a technical term for it, um, and so we'll just get this all wet in here. Pull the water all the way through, right over to this little rocky shoreline. 
we're going to fill in this water here, and then we're going to do the let it dry for a minute. We'll go back to the vineyard, and then we're going to start the uh, uh, start the sky here. So here's now I'm going to take this blue. This is um, and just it's kind of a tropical blue that we're going to add to the water here, and just let let that all let the pigment of it move all the way through your water here, right up to the horizon. You add paint the other side. We want to draw it just all the way across so that we've got the same kind of tonal range all the way across. If we had more time, we would be more careful with this, of course, wouldn't we? But haste, there we go. So there's there's your, your ocean color in there, right up to the island. Now, you might want to take a little bit of that blue and just put it a little darker underneath this island here. You can actually take and, and do a little, a little darker right along the horizon line as well. So there we go and just feather it in. And just finally finish up a little bit on this side as well, because you want to try to keep the tonal quality the same on both sides. Like that. Maybe just a hint more. There we go. So there's there's the um, so we've done the sand, we've done the uh, the ocean here, um, and we're going to let that dry just a just a little bit, and we're going to come back to the vineyard now. That's. It's handy about working on a couple of small pieces like this is that you can um, you can go back and forth. So now we want to do the sky in this area here. So again, just take um, take clear water and brush it all the way along. Hey, look at that. Maureen's joined us here as well. That picked up. And all the way across, we've got Geneva, we've got Colette. I'm going to make artists out of you all yet, I tell you. Um, one of the things that I've been doing is I've been trying to uh, encourage people to do travel journals. Um, you know, I've done some of these travel journals on long-distance paddle trips, and I'm trying to encourage people to think about on hikers and paddlers and just any kind of traveling that you do. Make sure you take a journal along. Okay, so there the, the sky is all this wet. Now we're going to take a, a blue in this case. Um, it's an ultramar ultramarine blue. And we're going to take that and we're going to brush it all in the sky here. And it'll, it'll feather its way through this whole thing. Oops. There we are. And I'm going to put some clouds in this eventually too. So now a little bit more weight to that color. I want to move it across, get some more, there we go. There's some beautiful blue sky. We'll pull that right down to the horizon, all the way across. Don't worry about it's too much, because I'll show you we're going to take some of that out here when we make the clouds. So, right down to the horizon. So there's your sky, okay? Notice how accurate and delicate I am with painting that up. Now you're going to take a, a Kleenex. Simple, you know, go to your bathroom and get a piece of Kleenex. And you're going to take that along and you're just going to dab some of it out across here. And then take your, your blue brush again and you can add some, some color in, back into that cloud area there. So you've got some dimension to it. Keep the horizon a little darker. And there's your clouds. But a, a little trick, just taking that piece of Kleenex and, and you, you can get some variety in that. So there's your, there's your horizon line for your vineyard. Um, with a few clouds, um, what did what Bob Ross say? Happy little clouds there. So we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use the same blue with the um, with this tropical scene. So you want to take your, your water, just your clear water, 
Um, try not to get into the ocean water blue here at this stage because they will bleed together. Watercolors are, can be annoyingly, painfully um, unforgiving with, with that. So there we go, that's water on that side. And here we go here, all the way. You want to march it up this cliff side here. And now we're going to take that ultramarine blue and we're going to put it all in here for the sky. Right down to the, the ocean horizon here. And we're going to give this thing some clouds as well so you get a second chance to try your... Uh, um, your efforts at clouds here. Because, you know, I've looked at clouds from both sides now. I've looked at them from up and down, and <laughs> still somehow it's clouds ref confusion, I recall. <laughs> clouds confusion? Geez, Joni Mitchell would hate me, wouldn't she? I really don't know clouds at all. So there we are. So there's, there's the, the ultramarine that we've used for the blue. And we're going to take that Kleenex now, and we're going to take another section of it and, and uh, just dab that through here. Once you've taken it and you know, go to a different section of, of that blue. And now come back to a little bit of blue and add some of that blue in to give you some variety here. Maureen says you should sing. No, I won't sing. No, I'm, I'm kinder than that. You know, I have a kind side to me. So there we are. So there's, there's that horizon line. Don't worry about the clouds. They're, they're crazy things anyways. Try to, if you can, try to, try to get rid of any white along the edges here. Just... I think it makes it look a little bit more credible. So there's your, there's your horizon line. You've created some clouds in there. I feel like God creating clouds. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so now we're going to come back. I'm just going to get close to finishing up here. We're going to come back to our vineyard scene here. Notice how we've been using one brush. Now, is that easy or what? So what I want you to do is I want you to take a little bit of that green that we were using, and I want you to take it a little bit darker. And then we're going to take that little bit darker green, and we're just going to go over this, just the, um, just the rows themselves. And again, don't, don't get all squeegee about, you know, it's, was it even? Remember, um, these rows of, of vines are kind of, um, you know, they grow in straight lines, but they're, you know, the, the foliage on them is, goes kind of everywhere. Um, so we're just going to pull all of that color all the way down through each of, each of these rows of vines. Um, or one of the first jobs that I had in the Okanagan when we moved here in the 60s was picking grapes for Mr. Zeron out in Glenmore. I actually made decent money picking grapes. And then years after that, I worked um, in the vineyard at Uniac Wines, which is now Cedar Creek, which is owned by Mission Hill. I made, as a kid, I made money picking cherries and picking um, grapes. But, you know, I never made much money picking apples or pears. Pears are terrible to pick, terrible, because they're so heavy. Um, so there you've got your vineyard done. So there's, you've got some, you've added some dimension to this, um, to this vineyard. Um, we're gonna do a couple more quick little things here. I'm gonna move back to my, um, uh, to my scene of the uh, the tropical scene, and I'm going to add uh, some dimension to these rocks here. So I've taken that little grayish um, black brown here, and I'm just going to add 
some outline to those pieces here. And don't get too worried about it. Um, but you want to just add, it, it provides a little bit of dimension to that cliff scene. A little bit of definition between the water and the and the cliff instead of just this flat brown. So you've got a question? I got a question. Yeah, uh, Carol, Carol is asking, it, was your sketching done in pencil or micro pen? Uh, pencil, the, the sketching was done in pencil, just a, an HB pencil. Um, you might want to take a little bit of that, that grayish as well here, and you can add a little bit on this side here. And just don't get all, it's not an even stretch here, but just kind of just a little bit crazy on it there. So there's your, your um, scene. Probably what I would also do eventually is I would take a little bit of that green and I would add some foliage in here a little bit along the edges to places so that we can give some life to this cliffside here. Something along those lines there. Um, the other thing, we'll go back to the vineyard here as well. And what I would do probably with this is I would take a little bit of brown, um, very, very light, and I would just, just put it in a little bit between these rows here. Um, in vineyards and in, in orchards, um, when you see the, the dirt like this, it's called clear cultivation. They don't let weeds and stuff grow up because they're weeds and also because um, it takes up water and they want the water to go to the grapes or the orchards as it were. Um, so there's your your clear cultivation, you're putting in a little bit of horticultural knowledge there. Um, so there we go. So there's your two little landscape scenes, one from the Okanagan, one from a more tropical area. Uh, um, I want you to take your micron, handy micron pen here. Um, this is 0.5, that's not really kind of thick enough, so this is the one I've out of my pocket, a 0 0.03, and just Put in W. Wilson. There we go. On one and on two. Remember always to sign your work. Down the road, this artwork that you do is going to be worth millions of dollars. Right? And, um, and people will want to know that it's, it's the real thing. So you can... Um, and sign it there. Now one of the things that I, we're just about out of time here I see, so one of the things that I will do is I'll bring this back. This is the practice piece that I used. Um, and what I've done with this is I've taken a little bit of that micron pen that's very fine, this is a 0 0.05, and just added, you can see little lines here, I've added a little bit of, of bl this black micron pen. It's, a, um, it's an India ink, it's permanent. Um, so start off with fine little lines. You can always make it thicker later, but always start off with a finer line and, and it adds some dimension. I've done that with the same here. I've taken this fine line on the, um, on the tree trunk and just added a little bit of definition. Are we down here? There we are. So added just a little bit of definition on this one side only because this is where the shade is from this side and I've added a little bit of this micron pen to the cliff side here as well. So that's really the only difference that I've done with these. So there we are, a couple of uh, pieces, landscape pieces. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this, um, had some fun with it. Um, you can take these and use them as cards just instead of folding it, just write on the back of it, tell your uh, family and friends that you love them and miss them. Um, and that uh, you're going to go on a wine tour or you're going to go down to an exotic place like Zihuatanejo, uh, maybe run into um, uh, Tim, um, who is it, Tim, somebody from Shawshank Redemption or Morgan Freeman. Um, Robbins? Tim Robbins, there we go. Um, so anyways, I hope you've had fun. Uh, please visit my website, waynewilsonart.com um, and um, sign up there and away we go. So. Thanks very much for joining me, and, and uh, we'll see you again. Have a great Sunday. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.